good afternoon. To those among you who are friends, family and supporters of our graduates, welcome to the University of Manchester. I imagine some of you have come a very long way indeed. As for those of you who are about to graduate, relax, it's all going to be fine, and enjoy your moment of glory. But I'm sorry, you're going to have to sit and wait a few minutes longer while we talk to you. Sometime in the last century, I sat in a hall very like this one, while an old guy in a strange medieval outfit and wearing a funny hat delivered a speech. It was a fine warm day, and I recall where our family went for dinner that evening, but I have absolutely no recollection of who the old guy in the funny hat was, nor do I remember a single word that he said. Maybe he was interesting. Possibly he imparted words of wisdom, I don't know. But then, why would you pay heed to an old guy in medieval dress topped by a funny hat? If I approached you on the street looking like this, you'd probably give me a few coins to go away. I could quote the Bible where we learn that those who are older should speak, for wisdom comes with age. But I think we can all think of evidence to the contrary. The question I want to ask you now is, was it worth it? That's the final exam question for those of you about to graduate. Was it worth it? It's what we often ask after paying for an experience, let's say dinner at a good restaurant, a family reunion, or a football match. And because we are complex animals, we don't reach obvious or easy answers, do we? The food at the dinner may have been awful, but the deal you struck was definitely worth it. The reunion cost you a fortune. Somebody spilled wine on the good carpet, but you mended fences with your sister, making the experience worth it. The football match involved a long and costly trip to an inaccessible part of Eastern Europe. The match was dreadful, a wallet was lost, you had a terrible hangover the next morning, and the flight home was delayed. But your team won the game, and so, of course, it was all worth it. And then there are all the other people involved in evaluating whether or not that experience in which you played a part was worth it. The waiter that you tipped generously, the old aunt who was delighted to be remembered at the reunion, the lucky individual who relieved you of your wallet. So what about university? Has it been worth it? Well, of course, we at the University of Manchester think it's worth it, the deg a degree is worth it, and not because you pay as a fee, but because we believe passionately in education as a personal and societal good. It has been said, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. And that is as true for individuals as it is for societies. In large part, our reputation as a world leading university depends on you spreading the word that your degree has been worth it. We need your employers to think that a University of Manchester delivers quality graduates. And we hope that society in general will benefit from the intellectual rigor and the set of socially responsible values that we seek to encourage. A key ingredient in your education has been your teachers. Albert Einstein, who lectured here once, said, I never teach my students. I only attempt to provide the conditions in which they learn which contains the truth while failing to recognize the huge skill and effort that lies behind inspiring teachers. None of us therefore make intellectual journeys on our own, and I hope you will remember those teachers who opened the doors that led to you discovering new ways of thinking about the world. It is very likely that family, supporters, and school teachers encouraged you on this journey precisely because they believed that a university education was a good idea. Possibly some of them had second thoughts as costs mounted, results faltered, and half-told tales of what you got up to sounded alarm bells. It may also be that on the what next after university question, you've remained a little vague, possibly even silent. But in spite of those wobbles, your family and supporters are here today, contributing to the celebration 
adding their acclamation to the value or the worth of what has been achieved. Some of you will have seen the film Good Will Hunting about an undiscovered mathematical genius in which one of the characters says to Will, some people can't believe in themselves until someone else believes in them first. Well, these are the people whose belief and ongoing support helped get you here. So perhaps you'd like to join me in showing your appreciation of the family, friends and supporters who've been by your side throughout your studies and are with you today. Thank you. Do you think now that you're about to graduate, has it been worth it? You've invested time, effort and money, and what do you have in return? Consider Warren Buffett's observation that price is what you pay, value is what you get, and what you get, it seems, is a degree. Now, some critics try to assess that value very crudely, seeking to track every pound spent and weighing it up against career earnings. Obviously, we want you to have a fulfilling career, and to be well rewarded for your work. And it's worth noting that 60% of UK industry leaders have humanities and social science degrees. Yet some of you may consciously choose a path that does not lead to riches, preferring instead a career that makes a lasting difference to the lives of others, or one that places other forms of personal fulfillment above income. All of these options, including the pursuit of wealth, are legitimate career routes. But there is so much more that comes with your degree. If you've gained friendships, broadened your understanding, learned from setbacks, acquired deep knowledge, honed your tolerance of others and their ideas, absorbed lasting values, tested your character, discovered your limitations, added to your skill set, explored your talents, and determined on a course of action, then your time here has been well spent. And on that point of action, think about the words of the Victorian philosopher Herbert Spencer, who wrote, the great aim of education is not knowledge, but action. So, what now? The US statesman Kissinger, Henry Kissinger, observed each success only buys an admission ticket to a more difficult problem, which is where you are now. What next? Three years at university for an undergraduate degree one year for a master's, some of you four years more for a PhD, and then what? Four decades to pay off a mortgage and earn a pension? Is that what awaits you in this fast-changing world where new jobs are being created and old ones are disappearing? What next, and how will you cope? When will you get the job you desire, and when will you become the boss? In what sectors will you work, and in what countries will you live? Will you marry, and how often? Will you have children, and will you send them here to study? When will you bank your first million, and when, you, when will you gift your first million to the University of Manchester? There are so many choices to be made. As Dumbledore says in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, it's not our abilities that show what we truly are. It is our choices. So think carefully about those choices that you must make and take some time to make them. Whatever you do with the rest of your lives, we like to think that you will stay in touch with the circle of alumni that is your own particular band of brothers and sisters, and also with your teachers and with this university that helped to shape and to form you. One day, we may seek your expert advice or your help in opening a door or that you support an underprivileged student. As to the question the old guy in the funny hat asked at your graduation, it is far, far too early to say whether or not your time at Manchester has been worth it. No one can answer that question when the journey has not yet begun. Thank you. Hello. My name is Brian Heafy, and I am the head of school of, of the School of Social Sciences. So on behalf of my colleagues in the school, it is my honor and privilege to offer my congratulations to all our graduates. So 
again, I'd like to give you a round of applause for getting this far. So today we're here to celebrate in this session BA Economics and Social Studies degrees in Accounting and Finance, BA Economic, Economic and Social Studies in Finance, um, BA Economic and Social Studies in Economics and Finance, and I have to say, not only did you do incredibly well to get into Manchester, but the fact that you're here right now is an incredible achievement. One of the things about the School of Social Sciences is that economics is central to our activities in the school. But it is not the only specialist program we do. And some of you might have taken modules in politics, sociology, social anthropology, or philosophy. And you will have studied along students, alongside students for more three interdisciplinary programs, Bachelor of Arts in Economics and Social Studies, the largest degree program in the school, the Bachelor of Arts in Social Science, which affords students the opportunity to follow a broader range of social science subjects, and finally, the PPE, Politics, uh, Philosophy and Economics program that focuses on pressing issues in the social sciences and through the complementary lens of those three disciplinary areas. So at this ceremony, we are celebrating your success. Now, one of the advantages of being the head of school, as opposed to the dean, is that I can be slightly more rowdy in my approach to this talk. So what I'd like to do is to ask the graduates to please stand. I would like you now to turn to your friends and family. There might be a sense of deja vu here, but I'd like you to give them the loudest round of applause that you can give them for the support they've given you. Well, I have to say that the sociology and social anthropology students in the session before this did a much better job. <laughs> so, with some yelping, can you give them another round of applause? And now I'd like you to say after me, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. For, For your financial, financial support. support, your emotional support. Your emotional support. We really, really appreciate it. Right, you can sit. Now I would like to ask the friends and family to stand up, please, if you can. I would like you to, I'd like the graduates to turn around and I'd like you to look them in the eye. And I would like you to repeat after me. You. you. Louder. You. you. O. o. Us. Us. Big. Big. Time. Time. We. we. Will. 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 Be. be. Coming to collect. <laughs> when you are all successful financiers and economists. economists. <laughs> You could give them a round of applause. They deserve it. Uh, you may sit. Thank you. So, 
About three years ago, just under three years ago, we saw you on your first day of university life, most of you. At the induction, I looked at the new undergraduates and I saw a sea of innocent looking, friendly, open-minded and enthusiastic faces. Eager to engage with others with new ideas and knowledge and to learn new skills. In your first year, most of you did that, although it has to be said that some of you probably learned as much about the delights of the Manchester nightlife and pubs or clubs or social life than you did about your subject. Two years ago, on your return to the second year, many of you reconnected with your uni friends and your social life. The look of innocence had gone, I have to say. But there was a look of a more serious enthusiasm in your faces. Now, I have to say, you didn't look as fresh as you did before, the year before. Some of you kept clubbing and pubbing and nightlifing, but you also engaged in a more serious way with your studies. And then last year, there was a new look when you returned. A slightly rabbit caught in the headlights look. A more determined but slightly twitchy eyed look when you realized this was getting serious. So you had a look of seriousness and determination. You were going towards the last great push and test of your endurance. And do you know what? You've succeeded. You're here you're about to graduate. So many of you have a sense of freedom from study now. Some of you will be free to study more through postgraduate programs like master's programs and PhDs. Thinking about your PhDs, you might want to look at the staff here and think this is what you're going to look like in 20 years' time. I'm only 35. <laughs> the upside and downside of this is that many of you will never have the sense of freedom that you have had as an undergraduate again. But the good thing is you are now free to face your future, the world of work, and your further study which I hope you will continue working or otherwise as a fledgling economist, financier, what I would say, a fledgling social scientist with the knowledge, insight and skills that gives you and that you will build on over your life, I hope. But hold on a second here. What is an economist? What's a social scientist? What do you call someone who's done economics and finance? An econ financier. There are many kinds of social scientists. And within the different kinds of social scientists, economists, philosophers, social anthropologists, sociologists, within these areas, there are different kinds of philosophers, sociologists, and economists. But one thing I think that's in common, that the social sciences have in common, and I hope you have a sense of that, a strong sense of that now, is that they help us to analyze and thereby understand human interaction and action at different levels of society. And as people involved in studying economics and finance, that's a key, economics and finance are key core systems, however we conceptualize them, for organizing social life and breathing social life, certain kinds of social life into form. So from individuals to households, from families to communities, from regions to national institutions and governments to global networks, the major contribution of and the need for the social sciences, economics, and finance 
is to investigate and know core elements of the human world that we inhabit and to explain it and to inform public debate on it carefully, specifying what challenges we confront and how we might address them. Social scientists, economists, financiers work in a vast area, in a vast array of areas where human action needs to be known and addressed. It is social science that is required to make sense of the past, the present, and possibly more important, our possible futures. To inform our sense of the socio-economic and technological directions that society is taking, or societies are taking, and to deal with challenges that we face as collectives of humans and as individuals and families so that we can understand and possibly come up with routes through which we can achieve our desired outcomes. And one thing I would emphasize that Manchester emphasizes and that the School of Social Sciences emphasizes and it may not be something that's so emphasized in economics and finance, but is the idea that when we are trying to achieve our desired outcomes or thinking about what they might be, we are thinking about social goods. So social goods are those things that are about individuals, but also about groups communities, nations, institutions, and so on. The social sciences address, and certainly economics and finance, first order questions. And those first order questions, for example, can be, you can start with the local and go global. So let's take the British context in which you are right now. Just one local element of the current landscape and the challenges, let's think about it, that it brings up. In less than a decade, we have witnessed three general elections in this country, the continuing devolution agenda from a referendum in Scotland to a proposed referendum currently, through to, of course, the promotion of this area of the UK, which is called the Northern Powerhouse. How is all this going to play out? Not just in and of itself, but together with this thing called Brexit. Most of you know what I mean by that, I assume. But it's not just those together with Brexit that are challenges we face, the challenges are also linked to changes in the US and Chinese domestic and foreign policy, and the socio-political change in, that's present in other countries. How will all of this shape our everyday lives, our communities, our regions, our nations, our security? Economics and finance are crucial to understanding these questions. Now just let's broaden that out a bit to a more deep, to the deep and hotly debated question of sovereignty and control, which lies at the heart of the UK's uncertain future with Europe and the rest of the world. A relationship that must reconcile issues of migration, ethnicity, economic performance and the pace of social change, both at home and globally. And whilst we deal with that, let's just throw in Inter intergenerational justice, the claims of the young and old to new kinds of citizenship, social care and aging, gender and sexuality, race and inequality, regional instability, online data, a world transformed by the World Wide Web, constantly transforming, confidentiality, risk and trust, and last, but evidently not least, things like climate change. 
All of these things involve economics and finance to some degree. So these are the first order questions that social science researchers, teachers, practitioners, and students engage with, and I've only scratched the surface. So understanding social attitudes, beliefs, and economic practices and financial practices is as challenging and as important, I would suggest, as the so-called natural sciences. Individuals, groups, networks, and organizations make up society, and we need to know the ever-changing ways in which they work, especially if we want to contribute to this idea of good society. So no wonder then that the skills that social scientists and economists and uh, people who have studied finance, this, their skills are in high demand by businesses, government, and voluntary organizations. As well as the issue of big data, that's very large data sets, uh, social network and data science analysis, and a, an array of business institutions and org an array of business institutions and organizations are also looking to benefit from what we might call microfinance, microeconomics. Above all, businesses and organizations are interested in the so socially reflexive skills that you have. And by that, what I mean, the skills that enable you to think about, analyze, and address the questions that come up in the everyday realities of what humans do and what the effects and implications of what they do are and how change comes about. So for you, graduates, having been taught by some of the very best social science researchers and teachers internationally who work here at the University of Manchester in the School of Social Sciences, the future is really bright. And we hope that you will use your knowledge and skills in a way that most benefits you, your families, your networks, but also in a way that produces social goods. You should all be extremely confident in your own abilities and skills, no matter what disciplinary background, specialisms, you have studied here. We hope you will take away very fond memories of your time here at Manchester, both socially and, of course, academically. And we also hope that you will stay in touch with us and engage with us through our alumni networks. So, on behalf of my colleagues and myself, I would like to say, I'm not going to do what I did in the previous presentation where I made all the guests sing a song. Uh, it was called We Are Family. <laughs> Do, does anyone know that song? We Are Family? Uh, no one's putting their hands up. <laughs> okay, you're all denying it. So I'm not going to do that, but you might want to look on the web later and see them, how embarrassed they were doing that. So as graduates in the social sciences, which touches all aspects of society and hum humanity, and that reflects on the richness and breadth of everyday life. We hope that you bring your experiences from here, your educational experiences plus your social experiences, forward with you. Grasp the opportunities that are there for you with courage and ambition. And as the previous head of school used to say, don't grow up too quickly. Make a life for yourselves and not just simply a living. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce uh, Ian Garrett, who is going 
to call out your names, at which point the dean and the vice president will award you your certificate. Vice President, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Economic and Social Studies in Accounting with Honours, James Carson. Samin Yassar Mahmoud. And in accounting and finance with honours, Damia Binti Abdul Majid. Ili Isyan Binti Abdul Rahman. Abdul Hakim bin Abdul Razak. <laughs> Muhammad Adil Adam. <laughs> Elila Binti Ahmad Farid. <laughs> Maud Rusaid Asan. Shia Ali. <laughs> Norman Amanat. <laughs> Noor Diana Hazia Binti Baba Haslan. <laughs> Lu Yua Chen. <laughs> no? Sin Boon Supakon Lauren Cheston Yuning Chu Kai Fong Chi Kai Ying Chin. <laughs> Alexandros Economides. <laughs> Shushan Fan. <laughs> James Chajie Gu. <laughs> Kasarina Hutsalo. Tian Yu Han. <laughs> Chin Chi Huang. <laughs> Muhammad Sulkahiri bin Ishmael. <laughs> Grant Lewis Jones. Mung Chun Lai. <laughs> Jane Ching Wen Lee. <laughs> Alika Hin Hei Leong. <laughs> Yuan Xiao Lee. Si Chian Lim. Hui Di Liu. Xin Xuan Liu. 
Harry Millman. <laughs> Yaran Mo. <laughs> Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed Sabri. <laughs> Najiha Binti Maud Natsri. Adiba Kaliasa Binti Maud Nizam. <laughs> Muhammad Kamal Atmir Bin Maud Roslan. <laughs> Siti Hawa Binti Maud Yusuf. <laughs> Alicia Lee Yi Ung. Zara Noor Mohammed, Adam O'Neill, Yakub Kasper Orshek, Aisha Khalida Qureshi. Irfan Muzamir bin Rusli. Eileen Nadia Binti Safri. Aisyatul Radhia Binti Sadan. Moe Sahi. Dania Shamanov, <laughs> Yudi Shi, <laughs> Saima Sideka, <laughs> Ai Chan Su, <laughs> Bira Hilary Ukutse. Mohammed Vauda, <laughs> Abdul Wahab, <laughs> Jingru Wan, <laughs> Shin Wan, <laughs> Chi Yue Wan. Benjamin Michael Wetherill. <laughs> Yue Wu. <laughs> Shun Yu Chi. <laughs> Danny Chu. Ankel Yap. <laughs> Alicia Yin Chi Ye. <laughs> Yue Lin Yuan. <laughs> Tian Yu Xiang. Yanlin Chang. <laughs> Uchen Chow. <laughs> Zishuan Cho. <laughs> Jemmo Chu. Yinda Chu, (Applause) 
and in economics and finance with honours, also graduating with an outstanding academic achievement award, Arushi Agarwal. <laughs> Peter Ash. <laughs> Shek Kwan Ao. Umza Ahmed Am Araksai <laughs> Sami Hussein Bari <laughs> Say Man Jan <laughs> Jin Cheng Hao Chi Oscar James Dean Patricia Domenti Ryan Downer Storage Akhil Ebrahim <laughs> Ucheng Fong <laughs> Marcos Fernandez Davila <laughs> Luke Robert Edward Foster <laughs> Lucas Gaspar Bahela <laughs> Georgia Elizabeth Gravely <laughs> Wing Gloy Ryan Ho <laughs> Kichun Huang Joshua Jepson, <laughs> Margareta Monchi Jin, <laughs> Johan Mikhail Karama Halev, <laughs> Shivam Lakhani. Hailun Lee <laughs> Wei Liu <laughs> Philip Magondu Maina <laughs> Natasha Panache Muzira Ruben Thomas Neilan <laughs> Matthew Nunes <laughs> Samantha Peterzona <laughs> Abdullah Nasser Fatih Maud Kadumi Aisha Rice, <laughs> also graduating with an Outstanding Academic Achievements Award, Jen K. Ran, <laughs> also graduating with an Outstanding Academic Achievements Award, Xi Yu Ran. Phoenix Samota <laughs> Devaka Saxena <laughs> Vishal Vijay Sharma
Jiahui Shi. Ji Xiao Sun. Alexandros Trikaliotis. Visha Tripathi. Paraskevi Tsiolaki. Xiao Tong Tu. Deepak Vadia. Chi Wang. Pak To Wang. Di Fan Wu. Yi Chao Xu. Xiao Rui Yan. Also graduating with an Outstanding Academic Achievement Award, Ting Yu. Yuan Chung. And in finance with honors, Maha Yasir A. Abdul Suleiman. Sayed Ahmad Al Hashimi. Alif Adlan bin Anwar. Wan Lin Tsai. Hao Bin Sui. Lin Ken Dai. Also graduating with an Outstanding Academic Achievement Award, Patrick Han Lin Go. Jian Gon. Hanis Anati Binti Hamza. Hanshin Hu. Xinjie Huan. Xiao Yuan Ji. Wu Lei Jin. Janos Peter Kurut. Edward Lee. Ray Chian Lian. Yun Yi Liu. Jia Qian Lu. Yun Chao Ma. Matthew James McKenzie. Lin Yu Men. Ryan Lee Ren Neo. C. O. Young. Philip Reiser. Andre Shafalin. Shi Mon Shi.
Ho Ten Chao Chan. Er Kai Chao. Jia Li Chen. Lok In Wong. Andre Wu <laughs> Jing Wu <laughs> Chenam Wu <laughs> Jin Yi Yang Juran Yan <laughs> Chan Yang Yue <laughs> Mohammed Zaidan <laughs> Chan Ting Chan Chao Rui Xiang. Zi Chi Chao. Yue Chao. Chi Ban Chou. You, Sonia Chu. <laughs> no, Shahira Shamimi Binti Zohairan. <laughs> and Yi So. Incident. Nobody fell on the stairs, which inspired some very really challenging heels, I must say. <laughs> so you can put your hats on now, now that you've graduated. We're not Americans, so we'll not throw them in the air, but you can put them on. And it remains only for me to thank you all for coming, uh, wish you well for the rest of the day. I hope you enjoy your time in Manchester. Congratulate you once again for your achievement and hope you have great careers and great lives. And I now declare this ceremony at an end. Thank you.